I recently just saw a video by Team Euphoric. They are a small YouTube channel and he has a video called Carnivore Kitchen. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to another episode of Carnivore Kitchen. For today, I'm gonna be showing you how to sous vide a steak, so stay tuned. Where he used his sous vide to cook a steak. This is absolutely delicious. Immediately, whenever I hear of a fitness influencer or fitness YouTuber using more advanced cooking techniques, I, my ears perk up and I wanna see what they're doing and see if they did it right and see if they're providing correct information, etc. Just like a professional fitness YouTuber might question me at, as somebody, if I start doing videos on form, I'm gonna do the same thing when it comes to cooking techniques. I've been doing this for 18 years, so let's just get right into the video. First, you want to fill a large pot with water, then attach your sous vide machine to the side of the pot and set the temperature to your liking. For those of you that don't know, sous vide is actually the French word meaning under vacuum. Proper cooking technique is you take a sous vide, which I actually have mine right here, and if I remove this, so this spins around, this spins the water, okay? So this sits in a thing, and it circulates the water and it's immersed. So another name for a sous vide is actually immersion circulator. Immersed circulates. Then there's like these little coils in here. Those heat the water. This is just residue from um, hard water. I need to actually take some CLR to that. So essentially the way it works is you clip this. Some of them have a thing that you screw on uh, or you clip it on there and you put it inside something. This is an old Cambro from work that got busted up and they were throwing a bunch of them away and I was like, I'll take them. So you take this and you do that and you fill it up with water and then you put whatever products, which uh, he's gonna be demonstrating. For this steak, I'm going to be cooking it at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, his has the, the screw on, almost like a C-clamp works. Uh, he His has a screw on uh, feature. Now, sous vide can actually run anywhere from $60 to several hundred dollars. It just depends on what kind you get. If you're just starting out, I recommend not necessarily going for the cheapest ones, but maybe going up like one or two price brackets. Like look for the cheapest and then find one that's like higher price than that, but isn't like $400 because you're really just learning how to do this. And the more expensive ones are usually, uh, they're usually closer for like commercial use and stuff what I do. Like I might sous vide 50 or 60 steaks all at once. That's when you're gonna want a more expensive one. But for just at home, uh, a less expensive one is just fine. For a steak that is under one inch thick, let it sit for 40 to 60 minutes. For a steak that is one and a half inches thick, two hours. And for a steak that is two inches thick, two and a half hours. He's gonna be cooking his steak at a 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is equivalent to a medium rare. Now, each steak doneness actually has a window. So medium rare, you could do 125 to 135, and anywhere in that window, you're gonna be fine. Even if you get it close, uh, like if, if somebody cooks a steak at a restaurant and it's ordered medium rare, and it gets to like 137, most customers aren't really gonna know. Um, it's really hard to tell within like one or two degrees. So the, the what it is, is the easiest way to remember is you start at 120 and under for rare, so 120, then 130, 140, 150, 160. So 120 is rare, 130 is mid-rare, 140 is medium, 150 is medium well, and 160 is well done. Over the course of a few hours, one, two, or three hours, depending on the thickness of your steak, uh, depending on the thickness of that, that, that the water is going to heat up to whatever you set it to, and eventually your steak is going to heat up to that same temperature. It's just gonna take a long time. But what that does is it ensures that your, your steak will never get overcooked. You can put it in there for eight hours if you wanted to, and it would stay at that 130 the entire time. Next, you want to take a vacuum bag and peel the edges back so the bag remains clean in order to give you a proper seal. He rolled back the bag, which is appropriate to do. It's not 100% necessary, uh, but you, you're still gonna, if you don't do that, if you don't do it that way, you'll probably have to wipe down the uh, the bag with something, and if it gets too if it, if too much debris gets on that seal, then it won't seal properly, and you're gonna get water in your bag. That's why even though I say you can use Ziploc bags like those thicker freezer bags, you can use those, but I don't recommend them because of the chance of 
the uh, water getting into the bag and if you are brining something if you're putting if you're cooking it in the brine or the marinade that marinade could get out and it'll just make a huge mess and if you have a cheaper sous vide it might even mess the sous vide up once your steak has been prepped you want to insert it into the vacuum bag then unroll the edges and vacuum seal the bag once the steak has been vacuum sealed you want to add the steak to the water bath and let it sit for the desired length of time i have these two rolls of vacuum bags you can get them on amazon this big ass roll, I think these are each 50 feet, something like that. You can get these for 20 bucks, and I'm not talking per roll. This is for two rolls. You can get two rolls for around $20 on Amazon right now. The, uh, the vacuum sealer, this one is a Cabela's one. I actually got this for free from a really good friend of mine. You can find them in thrift stores for as little as like 10, 15 bucks. But of course, obviously you can buy one on Amazon or buy one on, at Walmart or whatever. Generally, most vacuum seal bags will fit most vacuum sealers. Cabela's wants you to buy Cabela's vacuum bags with Cabela's vacuum sealers. But this is just a generic Amazon vacuum bag and they work just fine. I've used it a bunch of times, so. Anyways, I've already prepped my steak by doing a 48 hour dry brine. So I recommend that you go over to his channel and check out his dry brine recipe. Now, I typically like to either do a rub, a marinade, a brine. It just really depends on what I am going for. Um, when I do chicken, I love doing a brine for the chicken. For steaks, I'll do uh, either a chocolate or coffee rub on them, which if you want recipes for that, I'm more than happy to show you what those are. Um, but yeah, nothing wrong with a brine, uh, nothing wrong with seasoning it beforehand. And the cool thing is the entire time it's in that water, it's going to be soaking up all of that, all of those seasonings while it's cooking at the same time. Once the steak is finished cooking, remove it from the vacuum bag and pat it dry in order to get the best sear possible. The more moisture you remove from the surface, the better the sear. The reason why you want to have the steak dried out is because there is, in order to get the caramelization effect that he's about to use with the torch, all that's left to do is sear the steak. You can sear it on a cast iron skillet, over the grill, or use whichever method you prefer. What you're doing is called the Mylard reaction, and it's the caramelization process of the natural sugars that's within the meat, bringing them out. You can do this with the torch like he's doing it. I don't even have a torch, um, but you can use a barbecue grill. You could turn your broiler all the way up. You just gotta be careful about the cook time because if you set it to 130, and you take it out and you put it on the barbecue too long, the temperature's gonna go up and you're gonna end up eating a medium or, uh, medium or medium well steak. So what I recommend doing, if you want to have it on the grill and you want good solid grill marks on it, go about five or six degrees under what you want. So take it out, uh, put, it in, put it in the water, cook it till it's about 125, then take it out and do uh, dry it and torch it or put it on the grill or in a skillet or whatever you're gonna do next. Um, you can eat it without doing that at all. If you're somebody that doesn't like char on a lot of their things, then that's an option. But for most people, they're going to, it's not going to be, it's not gonna feel the same. It's gonna just, it's gonna mess with the texture and you're not gonna get that, that nice crunchy outside that you get from a barbecue steak. So I highly recommend finishing it off somehow. This is what the finished steak looks like, and as you can see, it looks quite delicious. Now, it's time to eat. You can see when he cut that steak apart, the whole thing was cooked the appropriate temperature. It's not like the outside was, was like gray, and then you had this like kind of pink uh, middle. The whole thing was uniformly cooked, absolutely perfect. And the cool thing about this, you can actually find rolls of BPA-free plastic vacuum seal rolls. So if you are somebody that's worried about that, that is an option for you as well. That's it for my added information on the sous vide and what you could do with it. If you have any questions about it, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Like, share, subscribe, all of that fun stuff. Go over to Euphoric's channel, check him out. He's really knowledgeable, but that's it for now. You guys have an awesome day. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.